Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can perform dilutions. So we talked about what concentrated and dilute meant and how to find molarity. And if you put those kind of concepts together, you get dilutions. So why are dilutions even a thing? Well, the first thing you need to realize is that pretty often, in fact, I'd say almost always, chemists decide to buy concentrated solutions, right? So sometimes those are just called stock solutions. And in fact, in our science building on the bottom floor, there's a gigantic sign that basically says keep out, no students allowed. That's where our stock room is. And that's where we keep our stock solutions. So why would you want to buy, you know, a huge tub of something or a gigantic jar of something that's extremely concentrated, if you're never going to actually use the substance at that concentration. Like I have 16 molar hydrochloric acid and we really don't use that. In fact, normally we use like one molar hydrochloric acid. So what's the point? Well, the point is you can always turn a concentrated solution into a more dilute solution. And you can do that by just watering it down. And that's also the reason why a lot of fast food places and restaurants buy kind of you know, the concentrated soda syrup, and then they just dilute it with carbonated water in order to make, you know, Coke or Dr. Pepper or whatever you're drinking. So the idea is that if you know what the amount of stuff is in your concentrated stock solution, you can add that to, you know, another little container and then add a certain amount of water. And once you've done that, you've turned it from this, like, you know, in this picture, it's like a dark blue to a light blue because it's gone from being concentrated to being more dilute. So when you're performing dilutions, okay, which again is an essential lab skill that pretty much everybody in chemistry has to learn, um, you use or are using the dilution formula when you do this, okay? So the dilution formula is the molarity of whatever you started with times the volume of whatever you started with is equal to the new molarity when you've diluted it to a new volume. So M1 is your initial concentration in molarity. V1 is your initial volume. M2, like I just said, is your new molarity when you're done diluting it. And V2 is the final volume. Now notice I underlined final because a lot of times people make the mistake and think, oh, that's how much liquid I add. That is not how much liquid you add. It's um, the measurement of the change in volume from what you started with to the final volume. So let's try to do that. Let's say I had a 16 molar stock solution, just like I guess I had in my weird example I used at the beginning. And I want to prepare a 1.5 liter solution that is only 0 0.10 molar. How would I do that? Dilution formula. And I always say to draw a picture. Like literally, if you draw a picture of your stock solution, okay, and you're like, okay, this is 16 molar, and then I want to make this, and then that's your like after picture, it kind of helps you figure out, okay, what am I actually doing? So M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. What's my M1? 16M. What is my initial concentration or my initial volume? I don't know. What's my new one? I want it to be 0 0.10. And how much of it do I need? I need 1.5 liters of it. Okay. So how much, uh, how much should my initial volume be? How much of this will I need in order to dilute it to 1.5 liters and get this concentration? Spoiler alert, right? You can see this is a huge molarity. This is a really, really tiny molarity. I'm not going to need a lot. 0.0094. So plug that into your calculator, right? So you have 0.1 times 1.5 divided by 16, and you should get about this amount, okay? Which is tiny. So if you have any questions about that, make sure you ask in class. All right. How would I describe if I was saying, hey, give me directions on how to prepare a solution like this? What would I need to do? First step, I would need to measure a 0 0.0094 liter amount of a 16 molar stock solution. And a lot of times what we use are volumetric pipettes. Now, no volumetric pipette in the world is gonna be like 0 0.0094 liters, but uh, there are plenty of little volumetric pipettes that we can use in lab and in class that will give us pretty common uh, amounts that you would actually use. Okay, this is really tiny, but still. Next up, I would put that in a cleaned out volumetric flask. I would then dilute the solution 
from my initial amount right here to 1.5 liters using distilled water. Okay, so you can kind of think of this as step one. This is step two. This is step three. And that's how you would make a solution like this. What about this? What will the molarity be if you dilute 50 milliliters of a 0 0.50 molar solution with 150 milliliters of water? Okay. So, like I always say, draw a picture. But to start with, 0.5. What am I starting with? 50 milliliters of it. It's saying I'm diluting it with 150 milliliters of water. Not that my final volume is 150 milliliters, but that I am diluting it with 150 milliliters. So if I start with 50 milliliters and I'm adding 150 milliliters of water, what should my final volume be? 200 milliliters. Okay, but M2 I don't know, and this would be 200. All right, why 200, not 150? I just said, you're diluting 50 milliliters with 150 milliliters. That's why I always say draw a picture, because if you were to draw a picture of this, you'd say, okay, I have 50, I'm adding 150 to it, so that would mean I have 200 total in my new volumetric flask or whatever we're looking at, okay? So let's actually do this out, right? So we have 0.5 times 50 divided by 200 to get M2 by itself, and I get 0.125 M. So I have a 0.125 molar solution at that point, okay? And a lot of times people say, hey, wait a second, I didn't convert the volume to liters or anything. As long as the unit is the same, it doesn't matter because no, look what happens. When you divide this by 200, the milliliters end up canceling anyway, so there's no point in having to convert this, you know, to liters and then converting this to liters. You don't have to. This is one of the few situations where you actually don't have to do that. Um, if these were different units, if it said 50 milliliters and then it said, you know, 0.2 liters, then you'd have to convert, you know, one of them to either milliliters or liters in order to make it consistent. All right, so 0.125M. Last one, I need to make a five liter solution of a 1.0 molar NaNO3 solution. So I'm making a sodium nitrate solution. What molarity would the sodium nitrate solution need to be if I started with a two liter solution? So once again, don't know my initial molarity, but I know I started with two liters of it. I made a one molar solution and it's five liters. So I need to figure out what M1 is. Again, all I gotta do, solve for M1. One times five divided by two, is 2.5. And that's how you would solve pretty much any molarity question that you can think of. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, that's the end of the lesson.